I want to ask you to be turning in your Bibles to the 19th chapter of John this morning. We have a, uh, an outline that you can write in and follow along with us this morning. I want to just go to verse 28, 29, and 30 this morning. And as you reach there, let me read them to you. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on hyssop, and put it to his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. The book of Romans in the sixth chapter tells us that the wages of sin is death. The payment for sin is death. It tells us that death is the only payment. It is the only currency that our Heavenly Father will accept to wash away your sins. The only currency. Throughout the Old Testament, there were millions of lambs slain. I said there were millions of lambs slain. <laughs> I just thought Jackie wanted to know. <laughs> that was you, wasn't it, Jackie? <laughs> Thank you for that confession. <laughs> Facebook will wait. <laughs> There were millions of bulls. There were millions of animals. There was who knows how many tons upon tons of grain and cakes of bread that were sacrificed month after month, year after year, century after century. And yet none of them could wash away the sins of man. All they could do was cover that sin, cover it, receive God's stepping back from it until somebody could make the payment for sin. The old rugged cross is all about our debt being paid. That's what it's about this morning. And man was not sufficient in himself in order to make that payment. Go back with me, if you would, to verse 30. The word he uses is, it is finished. In the original language, it is the word tetelestai. Matter of fact, it's used twice in these three verses. If you look in verse 28, he says, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, the word accomplished in the original language is terelesta, that it had been finished. Jesus twice in these verses tells the crowd at his feet and he speaks down through the ages to you and I and he cries out, it is finished, it is complete, it is done. There is nothing else that can be done. There's nothing else that needs to be done. So I want us to look at this famous word of Christ. And I want us to look at it in its past. What was Christ talking about in the past that was finished? What's he talking about in our presence right now at this moment? And what is he talking about? How does this refer to the future? Because it refers to every aspect of life for us. 
It is a completed work. So let's take one more look at this passage. If we were to go to the third chapter of Romans in the 23rd verse, we would find that it would say that all have sinned and that all have fallen short of the image and glory of God. We would find that Christ says that there is sin in this world and that the price was needing to be paid. Now Christ has been in the garden. He's prayed till the blood came out of the very pores of his skin. He has cried to the Father not once, not twice, but three times. If there's some other way that you can make the payment for sin, do it. But if you can't, then your will be done, Father. He comes out of that garden with the very blood on his garments. And he goes and there he is falsely accused of blasphemy for proclaiming to be the son of the living God. There he is beaten with whips. There he is slapped with the hands of men. Isaiah says that the very hair of his beard was pulled out. There the crown of thorns was pressed upon his head till the blood ran down his face and his neck. There he is placed in a position of being attached to a cross beam. And he drags it out into the street. There Simon helps him carry it up Calvary's hill, but nobody helps him as he's nailed to that cross. He does that all by himself, stretching out his hands and stretching out his feet. And there he is hung between heaven and earth. And there the one who created all things hangs in the balance and the sun refuses to shine. The stars close their eyes. The moon bows its head, and this world becomes pitch black dark. At the end of that three hours of darkness, God said, I'm ready to pour out upon you the sin of all mankind. And there in that darkness, he made Jesus sin for you and I. There God poured out all of his wrath upon Jesus, his son. There he poured out the judgment for sin. And there Jesus Christ said, Father, I give you my life. I pay the price for the sins of all mankind. And he cried out, Father, it is finished. It is a word that was used in order for Christ to say that all of the prophecy about someone that would come and be the Savior of the world. Well, he's here today, and it's finished. I am the Savior of the world. It was a term that the priests would use at Passover. They would take that lamb without blemish, and they would search him to make sure that he was perfect in every way, to make sure that he was the proper currency to be carried into the priest's to be used to cover man's sin. And that priest would look that lamb over. And when he was totally satisfied that there was no blemish in him and that the lamb could pay the price that day on Passover, he would say, Tetelestai, it is finished. It's accomplished. It is a done deal. This lamb can now go and be sacrificed to cover the sins of man. Jesus Christ was the human lamb of God. And the heavenly father examined his life. And the father said, I find no sin in him at all. He looked back at every word that Jesus had said, every person he had touched, every event he had been involved in, every conversation he had had, he looked into the depths of Jesus' soul and he looked at his thoughts and his feelings and he saw that he had never lusted after anyone. He had never desired the things of this world. He had been tempted in every way as you and I, but each time Jesus had said no to those temptations and the Father searched him thoroughly and said, it is finished. This one is the proper currency to pay for the sins of mankind and the father echoed back it is finished 
The old evangelist John Wooten once said that a young man approached him and quoted to him the famous passage that had to deal with the rich young ruler who said to Jesus, what must I do to be saved? In a very flippant tone, he said to old Wooten, what must I do to be saved? And the old evangelist said, I'm sorry, you're too late. It shocked the young man. That's not what he was expecting out of this old evangelist. And he said, what do you mean? You mean that I cannot be saved? He said, oh, no. I'm telling you it's too late to pay for your sins. Christ has already paid the price fully. You see, in the past, he took care of all of the sins of mankind. It is finished. You never have to go back and do anything to make a payment on your sins. You have no sin debt this morning. When God looks at you, he does not see somebody that stands owing him because Christ hung upon the cross and said, Father, I pay their debt in full. It is finished. But he does not leave us there because, you see, that's what we must believe. We must believe the truth. We must believe that Christ is the payment of sin. We must believe that he's fully atoned for us, not just covered our sins like a blanket, but he has atoned for them. They are, they are there no more. They've been done away with. Do you believe that this morning? I hope so. Because it's a finished work. It never has to be done again. But this word also brings to mind the presence in which you and I live right now, today. And Jesus said, it is finished right now. It, we could say it stands as finished right now. It stands as finished. It is the idea of going beyond believing to abiding. If you're going to abide in Christ, you must believe that it is finished, that the work is done. Abiding cares with it the idea of resting. If you don't think the work has been done, you're not resting. You're constantly doing something. The old adage that we said in seminary was, those folks are saved and they're working their way to heaven. Oh, they believe that Christ died on the cross for them, but they believe they had to keep up the good works or they would still lose their salvation. My friends, that work was finished on Calvary's cross in the past and it is finished today. It keeps us saved. It stands today monumentally throughout the ages as the work that we can abide in as Christians. We have the payment of sin placed upon us. It is, we are debt free this morning debt free you would use this word Ted last die if you were referring to a painting when people step into the museums of the world and they look at the great art they look at Mona Lisa and they say it's finished who's going to walk in behind it and say you know this thing needs another good coat of paint on it and <laughs> I think we need to change her hair color and give her some teeth so that we can, you know, <laughs> you, know, you know, that's always been the question. Why is her mouth that way? And I told them it's because she didn't have any teeth. I mean, she, I'm, why you want to grin and just show gums? I mean, that's not exciting at all. But it's a painted, it's a painting and it's finished. Nobody would go in and touch it. You wouldn't pull out a copy or you wouldn't pull out the original manuscript if you had it of Romeo and Juliet and say, you know, I think we'll add a little bit more to this. And uh, we'll have them come back as zombies or something. That's kind of what they do on television this day and time. Everybody comes back to life as some, something ungodly. But uh, you wouldn't do that. It's finished. A picture, it's finished. We, a writing, it's finished. We simply abide there. And we admire the beauty of the painting. We read the story 
to remind ourselves of the great creativity of the writer. We don't read the writing or look at the picture to try to change it or add to it or to try to make it complete. It's already complete. The way the person wrote it, the way the person painted it, it we simply abide there and enjoy it. Christ has finished the work upon Calvary's cross so that you and I today can abide in Christ Jesus. We don't have to work to get ourselves saved, to get ourselves to heaven. Christ has already finished that. He's accomplished it. It's a done deal. We abide in our salvation. We don't have to try to get a relationship with Christ. We abide in Christ. He's already established and reestablished for us the relationship with our Heavenly Father. He bridged the great gap so that we could once again fellowship with Him. It's all been done. It stands completely finished. There's nothing you can add to it. You simply abide in it. You enjoy it. Jesus hung upon that cross. And he says, it is finished, and it stands today as totally finished. There's nothing that can take away the work that he did upon Calvary's cross. No historian can wipe him off the pages of time. It's been written down in the books of heaven. God has it there. And God says that it will stand forever. And all the religions of the world can claim that they have a way to heaven. But they don't have it. Because there's only one way. And it led up Calvary's hill. And it stopped at the foot of a rugged cross. And it was the man who hung upon that cross who cried out, I have finished the work that my Father sent for me to do, and the work of man's salvation is finished, and I guarantee it, and it will stand for all of eternity. It is finished, he said. But I think we need to have a forward look today also. I think we need to look to the future. Not only is it finished, not only does it stand as finished, I I see that it will always, it will always be finished. It will always be finished. Jesus is an eternal being. And he does eternal work. When he saves somebody, they're always saved. It's an eternal work. When he says he's prepared a home for us, it's eternal. It'll always be there. God is not a God of 20-year buildings, 50-year buildings. He is the God of eternity. He says it is finished for us. If the past is believing, and we must believe, and the present is abiding, then for us to reach out and embrace the future, you and I must surrender to the future. We want to program the future. All we got to do is look in your AARP book, and it tells you if you want to retire with this much money, this is what you need to do. You need to plan your future and decide what you want. My friends, God's already decided that for us. He's already established what we need. He's already given us more than our minds could ever imagine. That's the reason he hadn't sent us a brochure. We would get caught up in the brochure. He wants us caught up in Jesus Christ. And so it is the act of surrendering to the perfect will of God. It's surrendering to the words of Christ when Christ said it is finished. I've taken care of the past, I'm taking care of the present, and I've taken care of the future, and I have a home for you, and you will be with me forever, and I will take care of you for all of eternity. It's finished. It's a cut deal. There's nothing else that you have to do. I have accomplished every bit of it. One of the most significant ways that Tetelestai is used was when it was used in the market where they were buying and selling. It would be a merchant on a ship or the person down at the store. And there we had accumulated a debt. You remember the days when stores ran a bookkeeping system of their own. 
And you could go into a store and you could say, put it on my father's bill. And they would send your father a bill at the end of every month. I grew up in a small town and I remember those days. We bought our diesel fuel and our gas on the farm. We bought it from a local place there, Stone Oil Company. And I could drive into Stone Oil Company and I could buy a set of tires. You know, Daddy would have skint me when I got home. But I could have bought a set of tires or bought gas. And all I had to do was say, put it on my daddy's account. And they said, just sign right here, and we'll send your father to the bill. It was taken care of. I didn't have to worry about it. Dad had already taken care of it all, but there came a point where Dad had to pay the bill. And he would go in and he would write the check for whatever the bill was that month. And they would stamp. In those days, they did things by hand. They would stamp the bill with one of those big rubber things. And it would say, paid in full. Paid in full. You don't see that much anymore. But you used to see it all the time. It would be stamped on your bill or they might would take by hand and write on there, paid in full and date it and put their initials or they would sign below it, signifying that there was no longer a debt there anymore. That it had been paid completely in full. Now we tell the old stories about getting to heaven and knocking on the gate and Peter's going to come out and ask us, you know, why I should let you into my heaven. I really don't think he's standing at the gate, but just to humor you, I'll go ahead and give you the answer. You can tell him it's finished. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to bring anything to heaven because my Savior has paid my debt in full. It is finished. It is finished. I don't have to jump through any more hoops to get into heaven. I don't have to go through any more obstacle courses. I don't have to have the secret handshake or the secret word to get in the door. It's finished. Christ did it all on the cross. All I have to do is show up and my Father will welcome me into heaven. He'll show me to where He wants me to stay. He'll show me where I'm going to worship. He'll let me walk through heaven. He will bring me into His presence. It's finished. It's a done deal. And all I need to do is surrender to that. It makes life so much easier when I don't worry about the future. When I don't worry about tomorrow. Because my Savior hung upon a cross and completed all that was necessary so that I could stand with my Father one day, that I could live with Him for eternity. It is finished, Jesus said. He calls on us to believe, to believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ. He then calls on us today to live it, to abide in that finished work. And when it comes to our future, he says, I simply need you to surrender to what I've already done, what I already have set up, what I already have prepared. I don't need you to fuss over it, worry over it, fret over it. I just need you to surrender to what I'm doing here. On that old cross, Jesus took care of every need that you had that needed taken care of. He took care of it there. You needed a Savior. And Jesus is that Savior. He was on the cross. He is today. And He will still be when we step into heaven, whenever that might be. He will still be our Savior. Jesus can still say, it is finished. I have provided you with all that you need today. It is a word that gets into the depths of your heart because it's, it's, not, it's not every day that you and I are called on to believe that something is totally finished. Some people would say things are never finished. Housework is never finished. 
Mowing grass is never finished. It keeps growing back. You know, taking a bath is never finished. We seem to get dirty again. Everything in this world seems to fall somewhere else. It cannot fall into the category of it is finished. And yet Jesus Christ said, that which is necessary in your life, I have finished. I have finished. I pray that you would allow these verses to sink into the very depths of your mind and let Christ reassure you of the fact that he's taken care of all those needs. He's already finished it. You simply need to believe in his power. You need to abide in his presence. You need to surrender to his tremendous grace that he has everything, everything in the palms of his hand. My Father in heaven, I thank you this morning that you finished. You finished the work that I could not finish. You finished, Father, my salvation. You finished my walk with you. You finished my eternity. Father, I can't do any of those things myself. You've already done it for me. So, Heavenly Father, I ask this morning that you would help me to believe. That's our starting point. Just help me to believe this morning. And, Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you for caring about me so much that you took care of this business which I could not take care of. If I had died, it would only meant that I paid the price and there would have been nothing beyond it. But because you died for me, all of glory is awaiting me now. And I say thank you, Father. Thank you. Now, Father, blessed is your holy name. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Let's stand.